Good evening and welcome to St. Agnes Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. Our readings can be found in the back of the hymnal, number 1005. Our entrance hymn is number 402, Comfort, Comfort, O My People, number 402. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever, amen. amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her 
that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up unto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he carries the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, 
and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him, at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed, One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandal. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure you've heard the expression, good cop, bad cop. Well, actually, good cop, bad cop is the name of an interrogation method used by security law enforcement to interrogate a suspect. The idea of the bad cop, or I'd rather say a, a tough cop, is that he comes in a threatening way. He also lays out the possible consequences and the punishment to the suspect. The good cop, the nice cop on the other hand, is the one who is less threatening, is more friendly in his approach, and tries to make the suspect at ease. The idea is that they both work together to bring about justice. I'm sure some of you moms and dads have the same technique in dealing with your children. At least my parents did. So anyway, to some extent, the analogy helps us understand the second Sunday of Advent. First, 
In our gospel, we hear about John the Baptist. He's the last prophet, the one who was sent to prepare the way of our Lord. He's the one that is proclaiming repentance. With that, John appears in the desert. He is down near the Jordan River, above Jerusalem, about 100 miles northeast of Jerusalem. With, he appears in this camel's hair garment with a leather belt. Must have been a rather frightening figure when we think about it. He eats honey and locusts. We know honey is a nice sweet carbohydrate. Locusts are high in protein. I actually Googled it, and you can buy honey roasted grasshoppers from ediblinsects.com. Something for your stocking stuffer list for the kids. <laughs> but in all, he appears like Elijah. That's the key. Elijah was foretold by the prophets to come again to prepare the way for the Messiah. They look to this Elijah. Jesus later in the gospel will say, John was Elijah. So therefore, we have John, and he preaches the message that is really quite a tough message. He says, reform your lives. The kingdom of God is at hand. Reform is conversion. It's this radical transformation, this radical change in our lives at every level. So the emotional, the intellectual, the physical, the social, and in every aspect of our life, whether we think of our personal life, married life, family life, church life, social life, work life, school life, whatever it may be. The idea is to convert our lives is to really give our whole life over to Christ, to really live that identity as a real Christian in every aspect. With that, when we think of reform, John is preaching the way Isaiah foretold. He's talking about leveling the mountains, mountains of pride, filling in the valleys, those little potholes we all have, those little venial sins we keep on getting stuck in, and making straight the path, not bending our way through the faith, but really following the path. In all, conversion is trying to, by God's grace, convert our lives to reflect the life of Jesus Christ. That's the goal. It is ongoing. Father Benedict Groeschel, who many of you remember, was a novice in the Franciscans, and at that time there was a wonderful priest, very holy, simple priest, now beatified, named Father Solanus Casey. And Father Solanus Casey would say to Father Benedict, pray for my conversion. And Benedict Groeschel said, he needs to convert, I need to convert. So with that, we think about John wanting us to change our lives to prepare. So there's that tough message. Now, with that then, if John were here right now, what would he say to each of us? Probably simply, get to confession. If we're really sincere in our Advent preparation, if we're really sincere about beginning a new liturgical year, we ought to do a good self-examination and go to confession. Why bring garbage into Christmas? We make time for so many things. We make time, especially this time of the year, for the extra social events, the gift shopping, the decorating, preparing for relatives, all of that's good. We should not neglect our soul. That's what is most important. So you parents have to be sure that you bring your children to confession. You spouses have to make sure you bring your spouse to confession. This is part of living the gift of Christmas. So who's the nice cop then? Well, the nice cop is our Blessed Mother. I say that because December the 9th marks the feast day of St. Juan Diego, the saint who received the apparition of our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Take our minds back. So our Blessed Mother appears on December 9th, 1531, and she'll continue, and December the 12th will be 
the major apparition. But at times, at this time, 10 years before, Cortez had conquered the Aztec people. He established the New Mexico, the New Spain. Also, the church sent missionaries, Franciscans, to evangelize the native peoples, as well as care for the colonists. Bishop Zumarraga, the first bishop, a Franciscan, was a very kindly man. He is known as the protector of the native peoples because he wanted to protect them from any kind of abuse. But there wasn't much conversion. Juan Diego and his family had converted. But overall, we couldn't say this was a booming success. So on December the 9th, 1531, he's walking along Tepeyac Hill, and he hears this beautiful voice. He sees this beautiful woman who says, Juanito, the diminutive. It's like the Billy instead of the Bill. So here Juan Diego, here's this woman, and she says to him, No, let's see, no for certain, least of my sons, that I am the perfect and perpetual Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus, the true God through whom everything lives, the Lord of all things near and far, the Master of heaven and earth. It is my earnest wish that a temple be built here to my honor. Here I will demonstrate, I will manifest, I will give all my love, my compassion, my help, and my protection to the people. I am your merciful mother, the merciful mother of all of you who live united in this land and of all mankind, of all of those who love me, of those who cry to me, of those who seek me, and of those who have confidence in me. Here I will hear their weeping, their sorrow, and will remedy and alleviate all their multiple sufferings necessities and misfortunes. Well, fast forward. He goes down to present the message to Archbishop Zumarraga, and of course, the bishop receives him, is kind, but it has his doubts. Is this really true? Same thing happens on December the 10th. December 11th, Juan Diego misses the visit because his uncle's sick. December 12th, our Blessed Mother appears again, and she Juan Diego says, the bishops asked for a sign. So our Blessed Mother says, go up to the top of the hill, which was rocky barren, and there gather up the beautiful roses. Roses don't grow in the winter. And these roses were those like in Castile, Spain, where the bishop was from. He gathers them up in his tilma, brings them to the bishop, and there's this beautiful image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Now, Bishop Zumarraga kneels and starts crying. But the Aztec people saw this as a message from God. Here is the mother of the Savior, the true God. Now why? Just because when we look at this tilma that's still in existence after all these years, we see this woman dressed in blue, color of royalty. There's this rose-colored dress, a sign of the new dawn this new age that is appearing. She has this little gold brooch necklace around her, a sign of holiness and sanctity. This little belt with the bow, a sign that she's a virgin, and yet, where it's placed, she's with child. She's bringing Jesus to these people. The Aztecs knew that. Moreover, the Blessed Mother had told Juan Diego that her name is Tela Cualtupe. And Bishop Zumarraga thought, that's Guadalupe. Well, Guadalupe is a shrine in Spain to our Blessed Mother. But the Aztec word denotes one who crushes the serpent's head, going back to Genesis. Now, for the Aztecs, who were bloodthirsty people who offered human sacrifices, even children, and there were probably 100,000, if not more, human sacrifices each year on their big pyramid temples, had three gods, and primarily the sun god, the moon god, and the serpent. Think what's happening. She's eclipsing the sun. She's standing on the moon. She crushes the serpent's head. So the Aztecs convert over hundreds of thousands converted that first year, 
and there were millions within 10 years. So the point is, our Blessed Mother, the good cop, wants us to be close to Jesus. She wants us to know that same message. She doesn't ask for us to sacrifice another human being, but rather she's bringing Jesus into this world, the Son of the Father, who will offer himself on the cross to give us life, to forgive our sins. That's the beautiful message. And our Blessed Mother says, embrace this. Embrace my Son who loves you so much and the Father who gave you the Son. That's the message of Advent too. So we should be motivated then to convert, to reform, to want to fully embrace the love of Jesus Christ. There's the message. So my brothers and sisters, good cop, bad cop, take whoever you want. But it's all in the act of contrition when we think about it. Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended you and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments. Or when I was a kid, we used to say, because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. Tough cop. But most of all, because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. Good cop. And with that, I firmly resolve with the help of your grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. If we can say that prayer, go to confession, turn our hearts over, we'll understand the gift of Christmas. May God bless you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you'd be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, diplomatic and intelligence services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine and Israel, the withdrawal of Russia 
and the defeat of Hamas and the restoration of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the church, stopped attending mass, or abandoned the faith, that this Advent they will be moved to reconciliation and renewal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Bonneau. And for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Willow Golek, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly our, f- oh, yeah. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our second collection is for Catholic Charities. Thank you for your support. Our offertory hymn is number 400, A Morning Star Draws Near, number 400. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with the humble prayers and offerings of your people. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, St. Juan Diego, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Anjustei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anjustei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Just a few announcements before we conclude Mass. Poor Box collection this weekend is for the Red Cloud Sioux Indian School staff by the Jesuits on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Anyone interested in attending the Discovering Christ program beginning this January is welcome to stop by the table in the narthex. Annalisa Pignon will, be, will answer any questions you may have. And then next Saturday, we will have our Christmas concert at 7 p.m. here in the church, our adult choir, school children's choir, and the Young Men's Ensemble of the Children's Chorus of Washington will provide a wonderful selection of Christmas music. Afterwards, there'll be a reception in the parish hall. All are welcome to attend. Immediately right after Mass, we will have our procession of Our Lady of Guadalupe, so you all are welcome to stay. So we'll have some little lit candles and so on, so just assemble in the front part of the area. We'll travel around the parking lot, end up in the parish hall, and have a wonderful dinner. So even if you didn't officially make a reservation, you all are welcome to join us for dinner. This is a nice time not only to remember this beautiful story of Our Lady of Guadalupe, but also to share our family life as a parish. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 392 on Jordan's Bank, number 392.